If you've been around the channel for any length of time, then you probably know that I went to a coding boot camp, and I've also made several videos about coding boot camps in general. And as a result of those things, I tend to get a fair number of questions from you all about whether or not you should do a boot camp and what kind of boot camp you should pick. There are so many boot camps out there. Some are great, some are scams. The boot camp industry isn't very well regulated. And so with all those things in mind, I wanted to talk today about how to pick a coding boot camp. So let's go ahead and get into it. I have three main areas I want to cover, and that is number one, curriculum, number two, support network, and number three, things to watch out for. Okay, so let's talk about curriculum. I think curriculum is really important, but it's also very easy to get kind of in the weeds about, are we learning Ruby on Rails? Are we learning full stack JavaScript? I think the technology choice and kind of what the focus of the bootcamp is, doesn't necessarily matter as long as it's a coherent curriculum and it's selecting modern technologies. So I'm a little biased here, but just as an example, if you went to a Java bootcamp, I would be a little bit wary. Now Java is used all over the industry. There's tons of jobs in it, but I don't consider it to be necessarily super modern. I would pick something more like Python and Django or full stack JavaScript. Technologies like Java or c .net that have been around a while aren't necessarily that beginner friendly either. So I would focus on trying to pick a curriculum that allows you to build your knowledge sequentially over time and kind of get those building blocks in place where you're going from just writing a little bit of code or building a basic web page all the way up to a fully fledged app. So with all those things in mind, I would pick a bootcamp that focuses on Ruby on Rails, Python and Django or full stack JavaScript with a modern front end framework like React or Vue. Ideally the Rails or Django curriculum would also have a section on modern front end frameworks, but I'm honestly not as familiar with those kinds of boot camps because I've always been in JavaScript focused boot camps. But just Keep those things in mind. You also wanna make sure that you're learning full stack development. Now, this is more the case now, but when I went through coding bootcamp, I had to pick either front end or back end, and I picked front end, but just make sure that you are choosing a full stack curriculum if you possibly can. That will be really important on the job search these days. The next big area we wanna look at is a support network, and that could look like a lot of different things. That could be mentorship, that could be office hours, and that could be career development and helping you make connections with local employers. So let's go through each of those things. Number one, support in the form of office hours and mentorship or time with your teacher. So you wanna make sure whether you're doing an in-person bootcamp or an online bootcamp that there is some way for you to get help if you need it. Ideally, that will come in the form of a mixture of office hours and one-on-one -on -one help. And most bootcamps provide you somebody that is kind of there to shepherd you along, but that is something that you wanna clarify and make sure that you're getting. Basically, you want to be able to answer the question, how will I get help if I need it? And you wanna make sure that that help is actually useful. Next, let's talk about networking in the traditional sense. Now, you basically want a bootcamp that has some way of helping you get a job and you want to know that people in the past have also gotten jobs. So typically this will be on the website, but you can also ask for statistics. Depending on the bootcamp, they may publish their numbers in a kind of transparent way that's becoming a little bit more the norm. And there are organizations out there that help bootcamps to be more transparent about their numbers. But basically you want to be asking the questions that say, what will things look like after I graduate? What kind of support will I have in terms of career development and the job search? And what kinds of companies and roles do people from this bootcamp typically get? Now, if people are typically getting well-paying jobs as application developers, that's great. But if people are typically settling and finding roles in technical customer support or something like that, then I would begin to raise an eyebrow a little bit. Assuming that your whole purpose in going to a bootcamp is to get a developer job, you want to make sure that people who have gone before you are getting those kinds of jobs. You also want somebody that can help you with all the other parts of career development and a job search like your resume, your LinkedIn. You wanna be able to get some coaching on that. So I would also clarify what that career development and support will look like after you graduate. All right, that was support network. And this brings us to our last section, which is things to look out for. And I basically have three big things to look out for. Number one, bad reviews. Number two, ISA and number three, job guarantees. Starting with bad reviews. So this is kind of self-explanatory, but if people have bad reviews of the bootcamp, then you might not wanna go there. And a good place to look for reviews of bootcamps are websites like SwitchUp 
or a course report, those are great resources. And so what I would do is I would number one, look through the reviews and see if you see anything that kind of raises red flags. It can be anything, but just look for low reviews and see kind of what people are saying. Look at the high reviews as well and just get a sense overall of how people are experiencing this bootcamp. You also want to be able to talk to past students. So this is relatively uncommon, but this is something I did and it was because I was pretty nervous about going to this unregulated institution. And so I talked to past students, I called them up and just generally asked them about their experience. So if you go to the boot camps page on LinkedIn and then look at the people who are associated with it, you should be able to find past students. You can reach out to them on LinkedIn, maybe set up a Zoom and just ask them all the questions you have, try and get a sense of whether or not they had a positive experience. Okay, next ISAs. So this is an income share agreement and this is basically a way of deferring your tuition by which the bootcamp will take a portion of your paycheck after you get a developer job. Now, this seems great and seems to align incentives. Typically, a bootcamp has kind of perverse incentives in some cases because you pay and you're not necessarily guaranteed a job and this still doesn't guarantee you a job, but there are some things that are a little bit suspicious about it when you start to look a little bit deeper. Number one is that the company that ended up kind of creating this and making it popular, which was called Lambda School, ended up bundling and selling these ISAs and kind of creating securities out of them. So if you think similar to mortgage-backed securities that caused the financial crisis in 08, Lambda School was doing the same thing with these income share agreements because they're kind of like mortgages a little bit, right? They promise some kind of future expectation of cash flow, and so they're an asset in a sense. The problem with ISA is even though they seem to align incentives, what actually ends up happening in a lot of cases, as far as I can tell, is that boot camps end up pressuring students to take their first job offer so that the boot camp can begin to be repaid. Basically, it puts pressure on the boot camp to pressure you to take any job rather than the best job for you. And I think that is probably something worth avoiding. And that brings us to job guarantees. This is yet another thing that seems like it aligns incentives, but actually when you look a little bit closer, it might not. So if a bootcamp says they'll refund your tuition if you don't get a job within a certain amount of time, that seems like it's aligning incentives and all is good. But usually these are extremely restrictive agreements. You have to send a ton of applications. So in some cases it's like 100 applications a week or a month. And basically it's another thing where you better take the first offer you get or they're going to say, hey, we did our part. And so basically there's a ton of fine print on these and they're very legalistic. Basically because if the boot camp ends up having to refund a bunch of tuition, that is not good for business. So I would be very wary of these and really make sure you're reading the fine print if you end up picking a bootcamp that does have a job guarantee. All right, so those are the things that I would keep in mind as you're trying to choose a bootcamp, curriculum, support network, and dicey things to watch out for. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have other questions or if I can be helpful. If you're still here, you'd probably like the rest of my channel, which focuses on software engineering and self-employment, so consider subscribing. Regardless, thanks so much for watching to the end. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.